Hi there, this is our group speech analysis on an, any given Sunday. It's a speech that Al Pacino gives to a football team and his goal is to basically motivate his players uh, in the locker room to basically win their upcoming game. So Katie's gonna start us off. Hi, so I'm gonna be talking about the purpose, audience, and content of the speech. So the speaker of the speech is football coach um, Tony Diamato, and he is played by actor Al Pacino. Um, the speech is given in the locker room of the football stadium, and it's given prior to their game against the Knights. So the Knights are one of the best teams in the league, and his football team, the Miami Dolphins, are fighting for a spot in the playoffs. Um, they're need to be encouraged and motivated in order to win before the game. So the main purpose of the speech is for the coach to really um, give his testimony to the team and show the team how important this game is and how they have the ability to win this game if they just push through the obstacles that they have been facing previously and do whatever they can and whatever it takes to win. So um, the three proofs, um, pathos, ethos, and logos are off also used in this speech quite often. Um, he uses pathos to really convey emotion and use his own personal testimony to give to the team to show the team that um, he understands what they're going through and that he that they can relate to the emotion that he is portraying. Um, he says that he chased off anyone that has ever loved him and this just really shows the team that he is a person too and that he has an emotional side to him as a coach as well. Um, the, Coach also uses pathos to give, or ethos to give an ethical approach to the speech. Um, he starts his speech just saying how he has been torn down a lot in the past, and then by the end of the speech, he um, talks about how he rose up and became a wise and strong man, and that's exactly what the football team can do as well. Um, logos is not used often in the speech because the speech is really trying to motivate the team, and using logical facts and statistics is not going to really grab the team and make them want to win. So he steers clear a lot of logos, but really focus on, focuses on pathos and ethos to make the speech really strong and convincing. Awesome. And I'm going to be talking about the structure as a whole. Al Pacino um, really thinks through his structure, and this really um, adds to his speech as a whole. Um, he creates a very distinct beginning, middle, and end. In the beginning, he clearly addresses the issue that the team is facing as a whole, and he gives the team two options. Whether they want to uh, stay in hell, he compares the current situation they're in as hell, and he gives them the option to stay in hell or fight their way out of hell and climb out of the pit that they're, that they're in. Um, in the middle, he compares the game of football to life, and he also addresses his own issues in, in life and throughout his life. And he constantly um, repeats the idea that football and the game of life are both a game of inches. Um, at the end, he provides the team his his team with a call to action, and he he asks them to to be that teammate on the field that will be that will fight for that extra inch for for their brother. Um, and this also just provides um, unity um, throughout the team uh, throughout the, the team. Sorry. Um, so throughout the entire his entire speech. This idea of inches is always repeated. He says, inch by inch, uh, we'll die by that inch, we'll fight for that inch. And by doing so, Al Pacino really um, invokes emotion every time he says this because the team um, is constantly hearing this. Every time they hear that word inch or, or the phrase, um, invotion, emotion is invoked. And it also um, creates a greater sense of importance. So this really draws their attention when he um, says this phrase. Um, he also incorporates uh, parallel structure as well as antithesis in his parallel structure. Or an example of par parallel structure in his speech is when he states um, between living and dying and between winning and losing. And an example of antithesis is when he says we can either heal as a team or die, die individually. And both these um, methods, uh, structural methods, also create more importance and it draws his audience in when he when he um, either uses parallel structure or antithesis and it just invo invokes more emotion and uh, heightens the sense of importance surrounding these ideas. So overall um, Al Pacino's use of structure really adds to his speech and um, gives um, importance in certain areas that he wants it to have.
infrastructure. Cool. And then I'm going to be talking about content, tone, and delivery. Um, so with regard to content, Al Pacino in his speech is um, basically has a need for um, giving information that is motivating and invigorating really for his players. Um, and so in order to do that, he has to deliver certain content that's going to be effective and that's going to stick and that's also going to be relatable um, to the game of football and then in an even greater context to the game of life. And like Daniel was saying, um, he does this with the idea of inches. Um, throughout his speech, he builds rapport by talking about um, that life is a game of inches and that if we're a half second too short or too long or too fast or too slow, um, that we will end up um, missing out on on something and we'll be losing. And so he kind of relates that to football and to life um, and he does it very effectively. Um, he says the difference between winning and losing and living and dying, also like Daniel said with those parallel structures, um, that's the game of inches and um, the true men, um, which he's trying to refer to as football players and get them to kind of um, exemplify this, uh, this example of inches. Um, he talks about how true men are ones who um, are willing to fight and die for those inches in order to achieve what they want to achieve in life and in football. Um, and so this content delivery is um, super effective. Um, and so going into that, um, the tone of the speech, it starts off very conversational. Um, and then as he starts to get into his idea of fighting for the inches, he starts to raise the sense of urgency in his voice, um, which you can see by his intonation and his inflection. Um, and then also towards the climax of the speech, he starts to um, almost yell, which is invigorating for the players and motivating. And you hear that in the immediate um, feedback that the audience gives uh, Al Pacino as they start to give him some amens and some cheers after each main point. Um, and so when he starts to yell, they're starting to cheer louder and louder. And so the immediate feedback provides for an even heavier tone um, in the yelling and then Towards the end, um, he brings the tone back to a softer tone to really drive home his point of the fact that he can't do it for them, that uh, they need to take this responsibility now and apply it to these next um, however many quarters for the game and then apply it also to life. Um, and so going into that with delivery, um, he does an excellent job of portraying the role that he was given. So Al Pacino is supposed to be playing this washed up, worn out coach who has a ton of life experience, both good and bad, um, but he also has a ton of wisdom as a result that he can um, apply and utilize um, to give to these players. Um, and so with regard to delivery, he does that pretty effectively. Um, and that's also seen by the immediate feedback that he gets from his players. They're um, extremely focused when he's speaking, and then when he starts to go into a more urgent tone, they're very responsive to that. So. Um, he does a great job of delivery and um, overall just presents a speech that is memorable and that's why we wanted to do our speech analysis on any given Sunday. So there you have it and have a great day. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.